Hey guys, and welcome to game two out of a hundred of the Mac vs. Machine series, where I'll be playing the Woogles.io master level Scrabble bot, Hasty bot, in a best of a hundred series. Now, game one was a, a pretty interesting game that I ended up winning. There were a few pretty cool decisions, especially towards the end of the game, so I strongly encourage you to go and watch that game as well as the analysis if you haven't already seen it, but without further ado, let's jump right into game number two. Now, in this game, Hastybot is going to go first, since I went first in game one, and he opens with the word vague. I have a, a decent looking rack. I do see a C would have given me chainsaw, but unfortunately, he did not open one. Uh, I do have a six of Haniwa, H-A-N-I-W-A, but unfortunately it does not take an S, so I don't think I have any bingos playable in this position. I could just play Haniwa through this A. What I don't love about it is it gives back a big spot on the D column with that double word, and uh, playing it to the A in this direction has similar problems. So I don't love that. Another option would be to play Wag. It's a much shorter play. It keeps a, a lead that's strong. It's not amazingly strong, probably, in terms of bingo percentage, but it's a, a nice balance of scoring and bingoing potential. It also does set up my S for swag, which is nice, since Vague doesn't take an S. Uh, so that's an option. I can't really overlap Vague uh, or underlap it in any way that I see that's effective. I think I'm kind of leaning towards Wag just because it gives back a lot less to Hasty Bot and, and does leave me with some more potential. I'm not sacrificing all that many points. I'm sacrificing nine points for, for a better leave and, um, and a lot less potential for, for pain on his next turn. So I, th I think I'm leaning towards Wag. Yeah, I just don't really see any other, um, any other good options here. I can't use my H in both directions to make A, so there's nothing worth playing. There, I think I'm going to go ahead and play Wag. Okay, he plays Vapid, and we had a, a nice draw here. There's Hernias and Nearish as two sevens on this rack. Both of them will play with Vagor as well as with Swag. Uh, or actually, rather, Nearish only will play with Swag. Hernias would go off the board. Uh, I don't love Nearish just because it, it does put the N in the triple-triple lane. It does score 78, which is probably a lot more... Than I'm going to get for my other options. So if I play Nearish here, that's 72. Hernias will also be 72. Other options, I could play Hepperins. That's actually probably a good play. Uh, well, that's 73, which isn't much more than playing my sevens with Vagor, but it does limit his options quite a lot. It really doesn't give back any big hot spots, which is nice. I feel like that's probably worth a five point sacrifice over. Overplaying Nearish and Swag. There's also Sherwani through the W and Wag, but that's going to score a lot less points. Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards Hepperins right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and play that. There's also Seraphin uh, through the P as another 8, but that would go off the board. Okay, so he has played Bag through uh, through the A in Vapid, so kind of a fishy play. That's that's the type of play that's going to make me think he probably has a decent leave. I have a promising rack, just a couple too many vowels, I think, to, to bingo with. What I'd love to do is, is get rid of A, B, E. Those are probably the three ideal tiles to get rid of. Then I'd keep an amazingly strong A, E, R, S leave. There aren't any great ways to do it. One of them, though, is uh, is Bow, which looks pretty solid. It scores 15. Um, it does block the Swag Hook, which I, I drew another S for. At the same time, though, I think after Bag, uh, he very well might have an S. It's not extremely li likely, but it's certainly possible, so I don't really mind blocking it. I'm also keeping my R for Vagor. And the leave is just so strong, too. I don't I don't really see any other great plays that, that that keep such a strong leave. Beat is available, but it's it's a lot fewer points. I just don't really see a compelling reason to sacrifice five points uh, to play that over bow. Uh, there's also options like like Ba, I suppose, but I'm not 
really that scared of the of the spot here from the triple. He'd have to have probably a, a Z to really hurt me. I guess he could have some plays ending in uh, ending in a Y. But the thing is, I'm gonna guess he didn't keep a Y because if he had a Y, I think he would have played Yag instead of Bag next turn. So I'm not too worried about plays making BY. And AERS is just so much stronger than EERS. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play this. Okay, so he did actually have the Q. He presumably, I guess he could have kept it, but he he most likely drew it. And uh, I've drawn insanely well here. <laughs> I now have satire and a blank, so of uh, of course we'll be bingoing. The only question is where. Of course we have lots of options to this R, uh, like Starrier and, and many others. They'll all score 74. There may be nines uh, making rokes or roque through this WE. I'm going to take a quick look there to see if I can find anything. There are plenty of words in that rack, like waterside and wasteries, but I'm not seeing anything that's going to fit that pattern off the top of my head. There might also be some cool overlaps here making uh, QI and possibly hooking Vager. I'm going to just quickly go through all of the uh, all of the racks, I think, and see if I can find anything. So A is Atresia, Asteria, Ariste. None of those look like they'll fit. B would be Barites, Baiters, Rebates, and Turbias. C is Atresic, Steric, Raciest, and Criste. D is, uh, there's, I think, seven with a D. There's Eridus, Destride, Tirades, Disrate, Diaster, Stator and Eridist. I can't remember if I already said Eridist, but I don't think any of those fit. E is Ariest and Syriate. F is Ferrist. It's a lot with a G2. It's a little bit overwhelming to go through all of these, but it's worth doing. G is uh, Igrets, Triages, Stagier, Sigurt, and Gators. None of those look like they fit there. H is, uh, appropriately, H makes hastier, given our opponent. I is just airiest. J makes nothing. K makes nothing. L is uh, tailors, retails, realist, saltier, saltier, and slatier. M is emirates. No, that doesn't quite fit. Smarty and maestri and misrate. And then N, of course, is the famous retains rack with... Uh, Ansier and Nestri, Nastier, Retains, Retina, Retines, Retinas, Stainer, and Steerin. And Nastier, I can't even remember if I said that. O is nothing. Uh, P, does Piaster fit? No, Piaster almost fits. Pastier, Pirates, Piaster spelled with E-R and R-E. Trapes. None of those are going to fit, I believe. Pastier as well parties. Q is nothing, R is Terry's, Tarsier, and Artsier. S is Satires and Artsies. T, Striate, Retites, Tastier, Attires, and Artiest. U is nothing, V, Veritas, Vastier, and Raviest. W, Waster, Wariest, and Wastry, X nothing, Y nothing, Z nothing. So I think our best bet is going to be to just bingo to this R. And unfortunately, with these racks, you do often end up spending a lot of time just going through all the possibilities. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play to the R from the left. If I played something like Rarities from the R this way, then I'd be opening up a lot more lanes for him, and I am taking the lead, so I'd rather try to give back uh, a little bit less if I if I can. So I think uh, in the interest of time, I'll probably just go ahead and play Starrier. Okay, wow, we have uh, gotten a, another blank, which is quite fortuitous. He made a nice overlap play of Whiny. Don't know if we have anything from this S. I do see Trendoid from this T, which isn't bad. Uh, it does give back some 
scores on the A column, which isn't ideal, but I do at least block both of those bingo lines. Let's see. I'm just going to quickly go through the letters again. A, adenoids, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I don't think there's anything starting with an S. I see endorsed with an R. And there's several with a W. Downside, disendow, and disowns. None of those are going to fit. There's dendroid actually through the D in vapid, which would be uh, which would be cool with three Ds, but it's most certainly not the right play. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and play trendoid over here. Well, we are drawing very well this game, guys. Um, we've gotten both blanks now three S's already, and uh, and the X on top of it with the uh, amazingly strong rack here. I don't see a great way for us to use the X in this spot. We do have a pretty good lead at the moment, so blocking whatever the biggest bingo threats are would be nice. There aren't that many big bingo threats, though. Probably the biggest ones are above and below heparins, which aren't even that likely to be hit. Not seeing anything great. I don't want to play a cross and give him more floaters to work with if I can help it. I also don't want to play ox and give back an O hook that I don't need to. Maybe maybe just ox over here. There doesn't seem to be that big a merit to keeping the X on this board. And I'm keeping such a strong lead, which is nice, so that if he opens anything up, I should be able to pounce and bingo, which would more or less end this game. I may be missing something, but I also don't want to uh, take too long here with, with the time pressure I'm, I'm in. In retrospect, I probably spent way too long on the, uh, on the satire turn, but uh, I just wanted to really make sure I wasn't missing an overlap there since it would have been so strong. Okay, so he has played very for a decent score, and we don't have a bingo here, I don't think. There's certainly no 7. I don't believe there's anything through the D. I could play Nooner from this N. And actually, the one it looks like it's opening a lot, but the one benefit to that is if he doesn't hit it immediately, then I should be able to close down these lines. And I'm not, and I'm also taking away the D and the lines under heparins in the long term. So there is something to be said for that. Um, actually, though, a rose here looks really strong. Yeah, because now where's he been going? Like this actually makes life extremely hard for him, which I, which I'm a big fan of here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And he exchanges five, um, so he definitely doesn't have a good rack. And I'm probably just going to make some overlap here with uh, with Agas. TIS is kind of lame um, since it keeps two ends. Oh, oh, I guess we have no knees actually. Yeah, that looks really good. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. And we now have three L's, which is, is perfectly fine. In fact, I'm going to go ahead, uh, you know, because I would do this in a tournament. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do L because I have the last I have the last S and I'm keeping such a strong bingo leave. So for first spread, this is almost certainly the right play. It's, it's quite unlikely he's going to bingo to that L relative to my likelihood of hitting a seven. And indeed, we did draw one. Uh, we have leftist now uh, next to L's, and this will most certainly put the game out of reach. He did hit erupting, so the bag is now empty. Uh, you can see his seven tiles here. I have to just make sure he doesn't have a bingo, but there are no sevens in that rack, so we should be safe. Now I just need to make sure I don't go over time. Uh, we do have a lot of high point tiles here that we're going to need to get rid of. We almost certainly aren't going to be able to play out in two with uh, with this rack. 
I don't see anything great on the bottom. I don't think he has any particularly huge threats either, though. So whatever I can do to just get rid of tiles. Like, maybe... I don't love Zek because it gives him maze. I do, I do need to make a play, though, quickly here. Uh... Maybe just, no, Zill doesn't really, I just have to go. Um, okay, I'm going to play Fez, just to put something down. That probably wasn't, wasn't best, and I'm just going to have to quickly pass out. Okay, a little stressful there at the end. I had to just uh, spam the pass button at the end to avoid going over time. So probably, um, we'll analyze this. I feel like my biggest lesson there, and it's it's one I still struggle with, is I, I spent too much time when I played Starrier. I spent way too much time, especially... Um, in a 15-minute game. In a tournament setting where I had 25 uh, minutes, maybe it would have been more justifiable, but in a 15-minute game, I really needed to just play faster there. The upside of potentially finding uh, an overlap was not nearly enough to uh, to justify the, the amount of time I spent. Um, so that was definitely a, a mistake. It might not have been one over the board in the sense of a, a scoring or equity mistake, but it was a strategic mistake in terms of time management. But let's see what else we might have missed uh, if we go back to the beginning. So he opens with vague. Um, oh, I guess I did miss one. Uh, this this is a word I have a historically very difficult time of seeing because of the uh, the F H W start. But yeah, that looks almost certainly better. Um, I mean, I still think WAG is not terrible, but 29 versus 15, 14 points is almost certainly uh, way too much to to give up. Um, so yeah I, yeah, I looked for overlaps with the H, I just didn't put the H and the W together. So that's uh, that's a mistake. Um, yeah, so this this rack, of course, the computer is going to say nearish, but uh, I think for, for five more points, Hepperins makes, uh, or for five less points, rather, playing Hepperins makes much more sense. Uh, here, Bo looks pretty good. I guess O is also playable. This is this is sort of an interesting idea. Just to, um, I actually kind of like this. It sets up the B for for sevens going across, and it also makes the um, the H column spot a little bit harder for him to hit, since now he's going to need a six instead of a five. Uh, I I didn't come up with this in in the game, but I think that's I think that's a better play. The B does, of course, reduce my bingo percentage a little bit. But at the same time, I am giving myself this strong lane that may very well stay open. Uh, so I think uh, I think O is the play there. That's a, that's a nice find. Uh, and it looks like, wow, uh, herniates through the E and the N was available here, um, which uh, which this, this also goes to show you in positions like this. It's, it's very easy to get hung up on one particular spot, and it can be a little bit overwhelming when you have a rack like satire and a blank trying to look through so many possibilities but it still does pay to at least give a, a brief glance to, to spots on the board that that look normally impossible or unlikely to hit because when you have a rack like that sometimes uh, you actually can hit these spots just since your your rack is so flexible and uh there is actually something ironically to be said for for not playing herniates even if i see it and just uh, just going with starrier because uh, i do give up five points but herniates drastically is going to increase his binger percentage because i give him most importantly this s to work with on the bottom which not only is easy to hit but also will score a lot um, i just always in general hate putting s's at the end of a, a triple word bingo line if i can at all help it uh, and this e is a very good floater as well as the t so uh, herniates does have some immediate drawbacks um, it's a lot easier for him to hit those letters than it is uh, to start with an s or a t in starrier so i think uh, overall it's probably still better to take take the five points or at least with uh, with my style i would normally take the five points if i if i saw it but i don't i don't think it's given the score and i'll be going up uh, a bingo i don't think it's uh, it's actually that big a mistake i i do wish i'd still um i'd still rather than focusing so much on trying to hit this eye column spot that I probably could have more easily uh, concluded wasn't possible. I do wish I'd looked at least in that spot, since I, I do think if I'd spent a little bit of time there, I would have uh, I would have seen that possibility. Uh, so here, Trendoid looks good. Endowed, uh, I didn't even honestly really look in this spot because I just knew if, even if there was something there, it would, uh, it would not be 
worth playing given how much it opened. Uh, so Trendoid looks good. Uh, yeah, Ox seemed like a funny play, but I don't really see anything better. Definitely not this Ox. Axe, Axe is fine. I just don't really, the pool's getting a little consonant heavy, so I don't really see a good reason to risk, um, risk getting constant overload. It's, it's nice too when you're, when you're ahead and trying to, to play defense and be able to respond to any openings to keep as flexible a rack as you can. And it doesn't get much more flexible than AENRS. I did see Exxon as well, which is, which is fine. Um, the, the end does make that rack a lot more bingo prone though. And if he's, going to make an opening, which he very well might, given he's down. Uh, I do want to be able to hopefully capitalize and bingo back and more or less end the game on the spot. Uh, here, I think uh, I think I played... I think I played a Rose, which I, I really like that play. Uh, his suggestion of, of new, I mean, that's a very reasonable play too, of course. it's It scores about the same. It keeps AERS. But I just feel like after a Rose, it's, it's so hard for, for him to bingo. Like, he... It's going to be almost impossible for him to play through the E in a rose under Hepperins. He'd have to start with like T E E, or maybe like toenails. It's it's really hard. Um, and of course, the D in Vapid has to be hit in a specific spot, which is never easy. So I I I think um, it's I don't normally play this defensively, but like I think given how constrained to the left side of the board this game already is, and my lead, and just the general lack of places to score on this board. Uh, I think this is actually a really solid play here. So um, even though I, I, I'm, of course, not surprised at all to see it down on the equity list, I'm, I'm very happy with this move. Uh, yeah, so rough draw for the bot here. He he pretty much has no choice but to exchange. Uh, here, yeah, Noni's is, is the clear play. Uh, it scores scores well, blocks the D, keeps a, a solid lead. Of course, this is, uh, this is way worse. Um, so yeah, this is pretty clear play. He uh, he's playing a little bit passively here. I I don't like this move of two for for him. If he's I mean unless he's really just giving up at that point, which I mean you're down eighty seven. I think it's still worth trying to make an opening and hope hope I have maybe seven consonants or something. So I I would go with uh, yeah nitro looks looks okay or maybe probably nitro over Noria just because of the constant heaviness. Like if I have a bunch of consonants, it might not be that easy for me to block down here. So, I mean, I think this is at least worth a shot for for Hastybot. I think uh, there's no reason here to to just play two and commit to walling himself in. I mean, he has no chance of winning if he plays passively. I think he he's not really risking that much. I feel like he, he should just do that. Torag is reasonable too. Um, obviously, it sets up an S he, he doesn't have, but he needs to take some risks if he's going to come back this game. So, I think, uh, I think Torag would be reasonable as well. I don't mind keeping two vowels in a constant heavy pool. But yeah, I, I really don't like this play by Hastybot. And of course, Hastybot doesn't really have much strategy beyond equity. So it's not not surprising to, to see the bot mishandle a, a closed board and, and play like this. But uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, either way, he's unlikely to, to win, let's face it. But this is uh, most certainly uh, what almost all strong uh, strong human players would consider to be a strategical oversight. Uh, so there's oh, there's a cool play of lowliest here, which I, I didn't spot. I, uh, I think I got very fixated on playing off two of my L's here. And uh, in fairness, though, lowliest does does open quite a lot for him on the top right. And, and L is just so, so likely to, to hit a bingo. Um, it's, it's, I think, so good from a spread and just overall game management perspective, I would definitely make this play again. Uh, so here he does, uh, he does open up. Uh, in, in this case, though, I have, uh, I have hit a bingo. So the game is, is all but over. Uh, now this does show you though, this, and this is why he, he should have opened up before. If I hadn't hit this bingo and he, he drew erecting on the next turn, things could have gotten uh, very interesting and he might've found himself back in the game or at least having some outside chances towards the end. So th this, uh, this just goes to show you why it's, it's important, even if you're down on a, a closed board, just to, to not panic and just give up and, you know, allow your opponent to execute their plan, but to be proactive and try to op open it up as early as you can. Because um, in, in this case, it might have given him some better chances. Uh, it looks like I missed I missed G's here. Uh, in fairness, I don't know if I can afford to play it because uh, it takes an E. I would be giving back some, some very easy plays like Poem for... 
for 40, if not something better. And I don't think, uh, I don't think Filk would go out for me next turn. So uh, I should have seen it, but I don't necessarily think it's the best play. I saw Zill, I just didn't really see where I was going to be going with JFK, JEFK next turn. So I ended up, uh, I think, slapping down Fez with, with not a lot of time on my clock. Um, and then at this point, uh, yeah, I'm sure Jig is not not great. Ilk is, I guess, a couple points better, but I'm down to seven seconds. I just, uh, I'm clearly going to have enough to hold on. I just need to not lose on time. Uh, Jink is, of course, better too to shed decay. I uh, didn't didn't see that on time, but uh, in any case, um, got got away with the win there. Final score of four fourteen, uh, four forty nine to four twelve in my favor. So a uh, pretty similar margin to the, the last game. I think they, we both scored in the low to mid 400s, and I won by about 40 in the, in the first game. Uh, overall, pretty interesting game. I definitely outdrew the bot by a significant margin. I actually got uh, all four S's in both blanks and the, and wow, and the Z and the J and the X. So this is, if you just look at the, the sheer numbers of power tiles, this is actually about as severe a bagging uh, as it gets. And uh, in some sense, that would make you think, well, maybe I, I probably should have won by more than 37. And uh, in some ways, it maybe does feel like a little bit of, of a letdown. But uh, I mean, I definitely made a couple mistakes earlier on in the game, especially uh, especially one, I think, was my, my biggest mistake. This is, uh, this is just not a mistake I should be making. It's a pretty straightforward play to see. It's just a word that I've always always had trouble with for, for some reason. The HW combination is is a bit tricky. So uh, hopefully this will be just another reminder to me to always always look for that and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again. Um otherwise I feel like I feel like though I played pretty well. Uh bow over o um was was not great. O is a really nice clever play that uh I I really should have seen if I saw bow I I should have seen that. I just didn't I think I got very very fixated on on getting rid of the B here. Um but yeah, this is a, this looks like a small error. Less sort of blatant of an error than than Juan, but uh, but still an error. I think after that, um, again, herniates is I should have seen it. Questionable whether it's actually best. Um, but yeah, I think after this point, I played pretty much perfectly here. There's uh, I I am proud that I found a rose. It's it's not uh, it's a type of play I have trouble seeing often, given I'm a more offensive minded player as opposed to defensive. But I think it's pretty clearly correct in this position and then afterwards it was uh, it was pretty clinical from this point forward um, just given how uh, how well I drew and how much he was struggling with some of his racks so I'm not gonna knock myself off any points for for the end game just given the time pressure I was under so yeah not uh, not my best game overall in terms of how well I played definitely not my worst but um, I, I can do better I'm happy happy that I Came away with uh, with the win, but I, I also know I'm not gonna draw like this um, very many games. It's uh, it's a hundred game series, and certainly Hasty Bow will have a lot of games where he draws uh, both of the blanks and a lot of the other goodies, and I'm gonna have to be working a lot harder than this to to compete. So um, again, got pretty interesting game, couple a couple a uh, couple fun turns, um, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and uh, maybe picked up on a couple words or strategical tips as uh, as always feel free to leave any feedback or, or questions in the in the comments and I'll, I'll certainly do my best to uh, to respond and answer any thoughts or questions so it is uh, now 2 zero in the, in my favor in the series again though it's a very long drawn out affair all 98 games to go so important not to not to get too confident by any means uh, with a 2-0 start that could evaporate very, very quickly. So uh, until next time, guys, game three will be coming up very soon, and we will uh, hopefully have another fun one then. All right, guys, see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.